What goes into a pair of good jeans? Denim, of course, and a lot of history as well. Serena Altschul follows the thread. Waist, length, I see uh, dimples in the rivets. Okay. In the intricately woven world of denim, this man, Michael Allen Harris, a commercial painter from Orange County, California, is sort of a celebrity. You can't research this stuff on the web. Nobody knows anything about it. So it's like a real, it's, it's like a mystery, you know? It's like being a detective, a denim detective. On weekends, he hunts old mines in search of blue gold. Old jeans, really old jeans. The jeans of the Old West. Dirty, dusty, tattered jeans that can appraise for up to $100,000. This piece dates from about 1873-74 when the rivets on the top right here are unstamped. They're stamped only on the back. Oh my goodness. Harris found this jacket, one of the oldest denim jackets known to exist, which Lynn Downey, the historian at Levi Strauss, showed us. This has its previous life permanently imprinted on it. Our designers are the biggest users of the historical collections here. There's such understanding, there's such respect, and such love for this. Downey says these antique jeans are prized by designers because of their wear patterns. Today, those patterns are recreated by jean designers so like awesome. Lauren Cronk for that all-important lived-in look. If you look at the way an old pair of jeans has been worn away or torn, it's sometimes easy to surmise what kind of early life it had. If there are really significant wrinkles on the back of the knee, for example, you can tell that the person either spent a lot of time on a horse or did some sort of job where he was bending his knees a lot. Cowboys wore them. So did bikers, like the one Marlon Brando played in The Wild One. Hey, Johnny, what are you rebelling against? What do you got? As did the demonstrators that brought down the Berlin Wall. No other garment personifies freedom more than denim blue jeans. But jeans were originally workwear. They were the essential clothing of a hard day in the mines when Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss patented the idea to use a metal rivet to hold denim together. And those jeans were made in America, like the rigid fabric from which they were cut. That is until the 1990s, when companies like Levi's began to shut down most of their American manufacturing. I mean, it's not only Levi's, it's everybody, so. So you might say, they don't make jeans like that anymore. That is, until you meet Roy Slaper. I like the idea of a whole factory, you know? A whole factory of old machines that I'm the mechanic and I'm the head designer. He is, in fact, a one-man sweatshop. Slaper uses 14 different machines to make a single pair of jeans. It doesn't feel like this wispy little piece of something. It feels like, here, feel it. He designs and makes each garment out of this one-room workshop in Oakland, California. This is like a big deal for me, because this is my, my denim. Slaper even designed the jeans denim and had it custom made at one of the world's oldest continuously operating denim mills, Cone Denim's White Oak Mill in Greensboro, North Carolina. The fabric is woven on looms over 50 years old, using a process that hasn't changed in hundreds of years. His jeans are not only made the old-fashioned way, in fact, they're designed to actually look better as they age, right down to the buttons. When they wear out, they get kind of coppery, brassy color. Basically, everything on the jean is made so that as it wears, it looks more beautiful than when it's new. The cost for all this scrupulous attention to detail? A tidy $340.
you see, in the venerable world of genes, what's old is new again. Except a little more expensive. Willie was our inaugural fit for men. and Like genes designed by Matt and Carrie Edmondson in Nashville, Tennessee. Matt and I both were always very in tune to this fabric. Their company is named after their grandparents, Imogene and Willie. Of course, genes like these require special care. We encourage, mainly due to small amount of shrinkage, to not wash your genes for, for six months. Believe it or not, others are even more particular about the care of their genes. I think the extreme is to never wash your genes. This sort of comes from the school that as miners and people wore their jeans, the indigo left the fabric and caused these amazing wear patterns to sort of evolve into the gene. See, this is what you get when you don't wash. You know, like, who knows if this was ever washed. These creases are so strong that they're actually breaking through here. I, I can't think of any other piece of clothing that elicits the kind of emotional response and memory that blue jeans do. You're touching your own history every day. You're wearing your own history every day. These jeans may be torn, but woven in them is an American history of work and play.